Let's bring in AP's global sports correspondent, Rob Harris, who is in London. Rob, this report has been a long time coming. Just remind us what sparked it. Yes, it's a real catalogue of institutional failings by English football in terms of clamping down on sexual abuse of players. And it was sparked in 2016 by one of the victims of a predatory paedophile coach, Barry Burnell, coming forward, waving his anonymity and telling his story of being abused. That then sparked a wave of other survivors coming forward and talking about the suffering they had experienced in the game. But it's taken five years after the FA decided to commission that report in response to the wave of allegations for the details of that to be set out and also, crucially, for recommendations to be made. But although the abuse came to light in 2016 for many of these players, in fact, it was a couple of decades earlier when we first started to hear about the um, abuse of coaches like Barry Burnell. But what this report shows is football did not do enough to act on them and indeed to try to address the safeguarding concerns that were raised by the initial disclosures. And Rob, some of the biggest clubs in British football are implicated in this. Tell us about that. Yes, particularly Manchester City, a club where Barry Burnell was a scout for, also Crew Alexandra, where he was a, um, a, a youth coach. And it was only really when he actually went to the US on a youth tour where he was, the authorities caught up with him, where he was convicted, he was jailed there. And actually at the time, the uh, state prosecutor recommended a worldwide ban from football for Barry Burnell. FIFA even wrote to the Football Association in England asking what they would do about this. And the FA did nothing. And that's what this report Report highlights as one of those particular failings and inadequate responses, which really let down children. Also, Chelsea are a club who've already conducted their own investigation, and they also found that they did not act on abuse targeted um, by players by one of their coaches. And it's really a story of the report where either children weren't believed or authorities turned a blind eye, did not act on rumours or indeed clear allegations, even when the police often came to them and asked them to act. OK, so, Rob, what happens now? Will this report result in any change? Well, there are recommendations in the report, including the appointment of someone on the FA's board to particularly look at safeguarding matters. There are recommendations for more spot checks across clubs across the country and checks on things like overnight trips, because in some of the cases highlighted in this report, albeit the investigation stopped up to 2005, there were concerns about when coaches had young players at their homes, youth players. And also the report highlights more modern concerns about things like social media, which can also be used for grooming. We are hearing some criticism from survivors. In fact, that there are no individuals really named in terms of action should be taken against criticism against those at the FA from the time that this report covers. And they think in some ways the tone is a bit light in not being hard hitting enough. And also there are still potentially cases to be pursued. But right. uh, certainly it's a report that's been called a dark day for, for football. Rob Harris, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you.